Hello, my name's Adrian Richards. I'm a plastic surgeon and the surgical director of Aurora Clinics. Now, uh, since Christmas, we've seen a lot of patients with PIP implants, and I'm uh, removing and replacing um, a lot of these. And I thought I'd just talk to you about some of the findings uh, we're noting with the PIP implants. First thing is, we're recording serial numbers of all the PIP uh, implants we remove. So the serial number is a number etched on the back of the PIP implants. So we're encouraging all surgeons within the Aurora group and other plastic surgeons throughout the country to get this uh, data because this tells us which batch number the PIP uh, implants are that are failing and are rupturing. So hopefully we'll be able to give more data to you and be able to give you more um, up-to-date information about the state of your implants. Now the first thing we're noticing is that um, 9 out of 10 of the implants have got problems. Mostly, um, uh, about 80% it's gel bleed, 70 to 80% is gel bleed. Um, um, and 20% uh, roughly are, are ruptured in our experience and about 10% are intact and fine. Now, it's important to understand how breast implants are made. There are two main companies from America where you can buy uh, medical uh, grade um, silicone and um, obviously it's very expensive medical grade silicone because um, you know, it's tested and uh, very pure. What it looks like PIP were doing is buying some in, uh, medical grade silicone but mixing it with uh, industrial grade silicone, perhaps used for other mattresses or hand cream. Now this silicone was about 20th of the price of the medical grade silicone so you can see that the price of the implants would be much less. The other thing they were doing is decreasing the dips that uh, each the silicone implants were uh, having. So when you make a silicone implant you dip it, it's dipped in um, silicone uh, mixture and also a sealant mixture which stops the silicone gel inside coming through um, the shell of the implant. So the shell is made by multiple dips. So the, uh, the silicone implant is dipped in, gets a coating of the silicone, it's then left to dry. And it looks what, as if P, what PIP did is decrease the amount of dips, but really importantly, probably uh, leave the sealant dip out on some of the uh, breast implants, which uh, then allows the silicone from inside the implant, the gel, to come uh, out. Um, and lie on the surface of the implants. So um, when I'm, you see some videos of me doing this, um, uh, we've videoed uh, the cases we've done, you can see in, in you know, certainly nine out of 10 cases, we have a lot of silicone gel bleed, which is silicone coming through and lying on the uh, capsule of the, uh, the outer layer of the implant. And this silicone is then free to be taken up by the uh, body. Um, particularly in the uh, lymph nodes. So, uh, as I said, nine out of 10 of the implants have got significant gel bleeds. Some of the high profile PIP implants seem to be okay. Um, and uh, I video those. Now, we are seeing a batch of implants and by getting the serial numbers, we're sort of developing a bit of a pattern of the uh, worst performing in breast implants. And it seems to be these were between about 2005 and 2009. Um, the implants were performing very badly and in this period um, we're seeing a lot of uh, ruptures. So early ruptures when you really wouldn't expect it in, in this sort of cohort of patients who had surgery as said in that time. So I think what's happened is as the company have gone on and on the quality of the material both the gel inside the implant and the shell itself has deteriorated until we got to the stage where the problem was picked up and um, the implants were stopped um, being manufactured. So if you'd like any more information uh, about PIP implants, um, please contact us either via our website or via email. Um, we're going to keep collecting the data. Uh, I'm encouraging all surgeons around the UK to keep the data, so hopefully we should have much more information available for you um, about uh, PIP implants, which ones are particularly prone to rupture, which ones are, are safe. Um, but I do think overall, certainly the patients I'm seeing, um, 9 out of 10 of the patients have got significant gel bleed and it's only these uh, very high profile implants which seem resistant to it. So thanks for watching the video. Please feel free to get in contact with us if you feel we can help you with your PIP um, implant related issue.